we're back live here in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is IBM's Edge 2013. This is Silicon Angles and Wikibon's exclusive coverage of IBM Edge. Uh, this is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. Two days of wall-to-wall, -wall, all day coverage. We're talking to IBM executives, customers, partners, CIOs, uh, Intel, we had Intel on earlier, talking about the Xeon, we're going to have an Intel CIO on uh, later today. But this is where we want to get the, the data and share that with you. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. John Borkenhagen is here. He's the CTO of System X and Blade Center within IBM. John, welcome. Thank you. Good to have you here. Happy to um, be here. Good to see such good systems presence at the, the storage conference. We heard today from Mambu, storage is going away. It's changing, <laughs> and uh, we're having some fun with that. Where's it going to um, go? Where's all the data going to go? Yeah, yeah, I don't understand go. what that means. Storage is going away. Yeah, well, I think storage is dead. It'd be wrong for a while. I think storage as we know it, it is, <laughs> is maybe you know, waning. Right? Storage is a container that is the most expensive thing in the floor maybe is going to change. But anyway, so John, take us through your sort of CTO perspective. Um, what are the big mega trends that you're following, the tectonic shifts that you're trying to capitalize on from a technology perspective? Well, there is a, a big shift around storage. Uh, storage, over the last 10 years, the performance has only pre increased by 1.2x. That compares to 800x in the processor capability. Um, storage, something has to be done there. And the big disruptive technology is flash, flash memory. Uh, make flash part of the storage and you address that bottleneck, that part of the equation, and get a little more uh, balanced system. Yeah, so it's interesting. Um, we spent a lot of time talking to companies that are putting flash, and people think of flash as a, as a storage technology. I actually think of it as a systems technology. You know, I, I, it's an old saying, the best I.O. is no I.O. And so I think about, for years, we've seen function move out of the server onto the storage array. And, in a way, you can see it two merging together. Yes. And I wonder if you could talk about that in terms of how that change is coming about. Sure. Um, there's a, there's use for flash in both the server and out on the storage area. On the server, um, the issue is that you don't get high availability. If the server goes down, whatever data that you stored into the flash on the server, uh, you can't access. You cannot access while the server's down. Uh, that's one advantage. Unless you have, copy it somewhere. Unless you copy, and you can't copy. There's uh, technology emerging to help you more efficiently copy. Um, but right now, the real high availability from a hardware perspective is still out on the storage. Um, there's other uses for flash, though. And, and like you said, um, there's capabilities to be able to copy it. Um, there's flash caching uh, for the, the external storage, the, the SAN or NAS. Um, we're, we'll be introducing in, um, in second quarter flash cache software that uh, uses flash on the server and does a read cache uh, for the data for the SAN. And we've seen a huge uh, performance uh, increases by being able to do that. And it's not, even though it's just a read cache, it doesn't just uh, um, add performance to reads, it also helps the writes. By getting those reads out of the way, the writes get done faster out on the standard storage. I think the line's blurring a little bit between servers and storage. If you look at the, the servers in the, uh, the storage in the past, um, disk drives, hard drives were just slow. Uh, you didn't need much performance. You used uh, to control the storage, you used real low-end processors. Uh, now that you have SSD out there, the storage controller is becoming the bottleneck. Um, it's not enabling the full performance of the SSD if you do put it out in the storage. So what you're seeing is uh, server class processors out in the storage. Or you could look at it the other way and say, you're seeing storage on these server processors. So it, it is blurring the storage servers and the traditional storage are kind of merging together and they're looking like one no. Yeah, so what is that from, a, from a CTO's perspective as to that trend? You, we, John and I love to watch what the hyperscaler guys are doing, but there's this discussion now, wow, they're having a hard time managing all this scale out, shared nothing. What, it, what's your take? That is a trick, managing it, but that's the direction that people want to go in. It, it, uh, it's lower cost hardware if you can scale out rather than using uh, a larger scale up uh, system. But at the same time, I would have said that we're going to continue to see a, a fast chip or shift or acceleration in that direction. Uh, but there's things in memory database, you're seeing SAP HANA, where that really is uh, reversing that trend a little bit um, for, for some of the uh, transactional capabilities on SAP HANA, you want these scale up. And it provides a lot, um, a lot better performance than the scale out. 
Yeah, so so it all comes down to sort of management costs at the end of the day, right? I mean, this, you know, you, you're driving costs down. I mean, the, the industry's doing a great job of, 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 of driving CapEx down. You know, management costs are really the, the key factor. So what are you guys doing there to lower those admin costs? Um, I, first of all, it's not just management costs. It's also a complexity of software to try to, to scale out. Well, management costs, there's, uh, first of all, virtualization. Uh, today, there's a hypervisor on the server. That really simplifies the management. It makes it easier to move things. Uh, it makes it easier to um, configure things by virtualizing everything on the server. Now, we have software-defined networking, which is bringing that same capability out to the network so that it's not, you don't have to go out and move cables. You don't have to have the administrative, uh, administrative staff to do that. You can do it now from a console with the software-defined networking. Um, there's some capability there today that has a lot of maturity uh, that can take place. As we go towards the future, it's going to be just as important as a hypervisor. Yeah, we, we participate heavily in the open source stuff, whether it's open flow, open stack, um, open daylight for the, the SDN stuff. Uh, we have, um, there's been a shift. It used to be IBM kept everything internal to ourselves. Now we really have embraced, embraced the open, open world, and we not only participate in it, we help drive a lot of those standards. And there's still room for innovation on top of that. The standards are, a lot of them are the interfaces, so you can interconnect, interoperate. So our IBM can uh, interconnect and operate with other industry offerings out there. So there's is it a standards it? part of it where everybody has the same stuff and we want to contribute? Um, that we do, but on top of that, we still contribute, we can still put in capabilities that um, we need for our own servers, our own technology which uh, we can't do without participating in those open uh, communities. How do you deal with, um, another question on a different, on a similar topic, density, right? Data center footprint we had earlier. Yes. And we actually gave the example of using Flash, how they've actually reduced the server component footprint, increase overall throughput, lower power, yes. and footprint, all kind of coming together. Off that comment that was a customer told them about, you know, old code, you know, Flash brings out the best code. Um, that's a big issue, density, power, and cooling. So we saw, you know, HP has Moonshot. Yep. We covered that. That's been great. Heralded Her Her is a great engineering feat, but still it hasn't shipped anything yet. So how do you play in that world? Because you, you, a Moonshot's the, the god box of this world. Small footprint, uh, high capability. I would uh, debate that, that it has high capability. Uh, we did a study, uh, Moonshot, one of the uh, target uh, applications target is big data, Hadoop. Yeah. And, and we did a study. We looked at how much performance compute power can you put in a rack, rack with Moonshot. Uh, there's a lot of little processors. Um, they're not, the, the cores aren't as strong as the standard Intel two socket core. Um, there's actually more performance in 40 standard EP processors than the 805 uh, Atom processors that you can put in a rack with Moonshot. There's about 20% more compute power. Really? So it's, Are those public benchmarks? Um, this is uh, using their, uh, it's using the CPU compute power, I forget which uh, standard it is, but they, they assign a compute power. And you guys did this internally at IBM? We did internally, okay, yes. Cool. Yep, it was, it was a study to say, okay, uh, how important is this? We've, we've done other benchmarks. Right now, the microservers, whether it's ARM or Atom, uh, we're not seeing broad um, advantages of them. There's some corners in HPC in the web yeah, yeah. Uh, workloads where it makes sense in the commercial market. Uh, there's still performance, cost, power, density, advantage, trying to put as many high performance cores on a processor, silicon chip, as you can, and um, up to the point where the cost of that chip hits near the curve. Uh, you can't put any more on the wafer without the yields going down. Too. Yeah, we will continue to be consolidation. If you look at, uh, I mean, the processor is going to continue to follow Moore's law. It hasn't stopped. There's going to be more performance per server which means that you can put more, do more consolidation on that one server. You're going to get more out of a server. Once you put, use Flash technology, we, we've seen up to 8x performance improvement by leveraging Flash, where storage was a bottleneck. That means you can take eight servers and use one to get the same type of performance. Um, the bandwidth capabilities, uh, it's just been a tremendous increase, whether it's PCIe or Ethernet in bandwidth. It's, that is not, no longer bottleneck. And that's allowing us to do things. Well, Flash opens the kimono to new scenarios. Yes, it does. It's it definitely new does. caching layers. It's a. It's yep. almost. It's a. It's a creative license for engineering right now. It, it is. Uh, you. You want to. It's a disruptive technology. 
how can you best leverage it? Uh, the first steps are to leverage it just like hard drive. And, uh, and it's taken a while to really see flash proliferate because of the limitations. The storage controllers just can't support the flash uh, performance like that. The storage controllers are being redesigned, so they support it. The, the, uh, the software wasn't there. Uh, we talked about the flash caching. Um, if you have a server consolidation virtualized workload, how these general apps, file server apps, how do you get performance with flash out of them? Now yeah. with this flash caching, you, you knock down as a storage control. So when we're using flash internally for database, for example, we had to, we worked with LSI to get a SSD controller. The uh, standard storage controllers, um, they were the bottleneck. You couldn't get the IAPS out of flash. Um, now the storage controllers are being redesigned. Instead of, I think we talked about, instead of the small Intel processors, they're beefing up the, uh, the processing power to really get the IAPS out of there. Um, that has to be fixed first. And then the next level of innovation, caching layers? Um, the, sand, the, yes, sand definitely caching? tiered. There's sand caching, um, there's uh, tiering, um, there's, there's really the software, there's two components, the hardware infrastructure has to be designed, the system, to fully leverage cache, that's being done. In parallel, it's the software. How does the software fully leverage it? Flash cache, sand flash cache is one of them. Um, there's app, the applications will be rewritten, uh, critical applications to really get the full value out of the flash, you know, get rid of the path length that you could hide all the code path length when you had a hard drive because a hard drive access latency was so long. Now it's popped up to say, why is this taking so long? It should be a lot shorter. Yeah, yeah. It's a code. They're optimizing that code to make it shorter. Well, we certainly got to get you with David Floyer because you guys could geek out because it's something that we like to talk about, the different levels. And obviously the, the highest level of, you know, fruit the top of the tree that's hard to get at is a complete data center reboot with Flash.